Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today I'm going to share with you a few ideas for reducing the size of a Word document in terms of how many pages it prints on. I have a recipe here that I copied from a website and it's running to two pages. I want it just on one page. Now firstly this is the website it came from, Ethan Chlebowski com. It's a recipe for Cacio e Pepe and it looks really good. So I have copied it into a Word document. It's come in really clean. That's what I've been really impressed about. There's nothing funky in this document. It's just too long for being able to be printed on a single sheet of paper. So here are the things I'm going to do. Firstly, I'm going to the View tab. I'm going to turn on Rulers because what I want to do is reduce this enormous space here. When you can see Rulers on the screen, you could just grab this indicator here and shrink the top margin. And down here I can decrease the bottom margin and I've pretty much solved my problem. I do have a second sheet of paper here. To see that, let's go to the Home tab on the ribbon. Let's click this Show Hide button here. You can see that there's a lingering paragraph mark here, so I would just remove that. So now I've just got a document that is one page long. Let me just turn off the Show Hide button. There are a few other things that you can do. One of them is to come over here and make this margin a little bit smaller. And you could also come here and make this one a bit smaller. It's a little bit tricky. You want to place your mouse pointer over this sort of indicator until you get this, the double lines, and it says left margin. Then you can go and just grab it. Now another thing that you could do is to reduce your font size. Right now I'm working with an 11 point font. I could make it, for example, 10 and a half. Let's just say how readable 10 and a half is. Just half a point in font size can often solve some of your problems. You can see it's still very, very easy to read. Another thing that I might think about is this area here. For a start, I could remove the spaces or the really large spaces between these items. So let's just go and select everything here. Let's again go to the Home tab on the ribbon and let's go here to the Line Spacing Options. I'm going to click here on Line Spacing Options because I want to read what's happening here. And what's happening here is that I've got an after spacing of eight points. So after every single line is eight points of spacing. Well, you know what? I could make that four. Let's just see what four looks like. You'll see that it's just a little bit closer. That might be enough to make some extra space. Another thing that I might do is make this two columns because there's plenty of room out here. So what I'm going to do is select over the cheese and black pepper sauce ingredients and the pasta ingredients. I'm going up here to layout and I'm going to columns and I'm going to click here on more columns. So here I can select two as my columns and I want to apply it to selected text. I do want it to be equal column width. If you wanted a line between the columns, you could add one here. I'm just going to click OK. Now this looks really good except that the cheese and black pepper sauce ingredient water has come over here and it would be a little bit nicer if it was stuck back over here. Well, that's easy to solve. I'm going to place my insertion point here just after the 150 grams of water. And again, on the layout tab, I'm going here to breaks. I'm going to open that up and just add a column break. What that is, is a break that says, okay, this first column is going to stop at this point with this item. And it, you can see that the 150 grams of water has appeared down here. We've still got all of this saving of space, so we're doing really well. But if you look, you'll see that cheese and black pepper sauce is up here and pasta is down here. There's something in here. Let's go and see what that something is. Let's go back to the Home tab of the ribbon. Let's go back to the Show Hide button and you can see that there's again another trailing paragraph mark. I'm just going to delete it and then let's close that up. And you can see that our ingredients now look the same from one side to the other, except this one is indented a little bit. To outdent it, I'm going to place my insertion point just in front of the word pasta. Let's go to paragraph and see what's causing the issue here. Well, I have a left indentation here, so I'm going to take that down to zero and press OK and now that's brought that back. But you can see here that we've got a problem down here. Again, let's turn back on our 
paragraph markers. I'm going to insert a paragraph marker here and I'm going to copy this format. So let's go and select this text, Format Painter, and let's just paint it onto this. Again, turning this Show Hide button off. So the only thing left to deal with now is the fact that this pasta has turned into a bullet point, but we've got some perfectly formatted text over here. I'm just going to select this. I'm going to the Format Painter, which of course you'll also find on the Home tab, and I'm just going to paint that format over this text. And that's removed that leading bullet point. So we've done the work now to reduce a document. There are a lot of very simple ideas here that you can implement. There are a lot better ideas than just slamming a document with a reduced font size, which just scrunches everything up. Using smaller margins, using columns where they're appropriate, adjusting spacing are all really good options for reducing the space that a document takes and hopefully there's some ideas there that you've been able to pick up that you can put to use in future and of course if you're interested in the recipe the link to Ethan's website is on the screen now so you can go and find that if you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results every time, then you'll love my other YouTube videos. So give this video a thumbs up and click to subscribe to the channel. And on the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you to watch next.